Have you ever wondered why your eldest is so different from your youngest? Would you like to know how you can adapt your parenting approaches to your individual child? Well, make sure you watch until the end of this video to get answers to all these questions to make you into even more of an awesome parent. Welcome back, mom and dads. Today, I am going to talk about what's known as temperaments. A temperament is how a child emotionally reacts and interacts with the world. It is based on both biological and environmental factors. And it starts even before they are born. It starts right from the moment of conception of your child. The most influential research on this topic is done by Chess and Thomas in their New York Longitudinal Study that lasted for several decades from 1956 to 1988. In this study, they found nine temperament traits that can be commonly identified in young children. From these nine traits, researchers found that six of them, specifically activity, regularity, reactivity, adaptability, intensity, and mood, tend to cluster together to form three types of temperament. And these temperaments are easy temperament, difficult temperament, and slow to warm up temperaments. Children with easy temperament have a positive approach to new situations, very adaptable, and generally have a positive mood while having a mild to moderate response to stimuli. So in general, parents do tend to have much easier time with this type of temperament. Children with difficult temperament tend to withdraw from new or unfamiliar situations. They are slower to adapt, and they generally have a negative mood, while showing intense reactions to stimuli. You will know from the get-go if you have a difficult temperament baby, as they tend to cry a lot. And when they do, oh, they cry hard. If you ever describe your baby as either colic or high-maintenance baby, there is a good chance that she has a difficult temperament. Children with slow to warm up temperament tend to have low activity levels and show mild reaction to stimuli. They tend to withdraw from new situations and are slow to adapt to something new. They also tend to have somewhat of a negative mood, although not as negative as a difficult temperament child. As you can imagine, the temperament of your child will have an influence on your parenting experience. In fact, there has been a study in 2005 that was published in the Journal of Applied Developmental Psychology that showed a bi-directional association between temperament and parenting. They found that children with difficult temperament tend to elicit a tough response and inconsistent discipline from their parents which is understandable considering how much more energy and focus is needed when parenting a difficult child compared to an easy one. It's very easy to end up yelling at them so they would behave in a way we want them to. But ironically, the research also showed that the low emotional support and tough love that parents easily fall into with difficult children also cause these children to end up with more problems. Does that mean one temperament is necessarily better than the other? The simple answer, no. There is no such thing as good or bad temperament, but it is true that a difficult baby can be exhausting and can make parents concerned, as there are studies that show that babies with difficult temperaments are more likely to exhibit behavioral and emotional disorders later in life. But all is not lost, as there is something called differential susceptibility. Differential susceptibility was initially proposed by Jay Belsky at the University of California. This study was from 2009, showed that young children with difficult temperament were affected to the greater degree by the quality of the parenting when compared to easy temperament children. Children with difficult temperament who were raised with good parenting tended to do better in cognitive, academic, social adjustment than their easy counterparts. On the other hand, when it was bad parenting, 
a difficult baby ended up much worse. So what was considered good parenting? It was defined as good parenting when the parents show a high level of emotional and autonomy support. And it was considered bad when the parents showed low levels of the same criteria. So what does that mean? Your difficult child could end up being more successful if you can provide good parenting. And this precise definition of good parenting is very similar to authoritative parenting, which provides high emotional and autonomy support. If you want to find out more about authoritative parenting, check out my video on parenting styles using the link up here. So what are some of the practical approaches that we can take? We can look at the following three traits, reactivity, self-regulations of emotions, and sociability. With a highly reactive child, when something good happens, it's all fun and good, but if she is unhappy about something or not getting her way, she's likely to throw a big tantrum. You will need to show her how to regulate her emotions and use words. A reactive child typically has a lot of energy and tends to be very physically active. So you can help her direct that energy by encouraging her to try different sporting activities. A less reactive child is usually easy going, but also means that they may prefer to not speak out. In this case, you need to encourage her to speak her mind and be more assertive, so she does not feel left out. In contrast to highly reactive children, she may be less physically active, so she may prefer calmer activities such as drawing. So don't try to force her into sports, but instead get involved by doing these activities together to foster a good connection with your child. A child who self-regulates her emotions well is good at staying calm. Her mood swings aren't huge, so she tends to be less impulsive too. But this great control of her emotions may also make her a bit of a perfectionist. So do let her know that it's okay to make mistakes and not be perfect all the time. If your child has a short attention span, especially when faced with difficult tasks, she may give up easily and move on to the next thing. This carefree approach can allow her to be more creative, but you have to help her to learn to focus so she's not always giving up at the first sight of difficulty. If your child is very sociable, she will enjoy being in a group, but it's also important for her to learn to occupy herself as well. A child with more sociable temperament is also usually very adaptable. So build on this strength by giving your child lots of new experiences. Whereas if your child isn't very sociable, she may be very good at playing by herself, so she's not easily bored. But do make sure she doesn't isolate herself too much and that she is making friends. A less sociable child isn't typically very adaptable, so she likes having a regular routine. In fact, a sudden change in routine can add lots of stress, so try to introduce new things gradually. In addition to these, a bonus tip. Always remember to advocate for your child. No one will understand your child's temperament better than you do, so let others understand. For example, explain to the grandparents who may get upset that their grandchild is not showing them as much affection as they would like, that your child needs time to adjust and that it takes her a little bit of time before she is completely comfortable. Help your child to be able to warm up by providing her with a sense of safety with your presence, rather than just tossing her into the arms of her grandparents so she gets used to it. Remember, the goal here isn't to change your child's temperament. That's like forcing an apple to be more like orange. But it is to help your child make the most of her unique temperament. Remember, mom and dads, there is no good or bad temperaments, just your child's temperament understand it, and become the parent your child needs. I hope that you find value in this video, and if so, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. As always, thank you for watching, and happy parenting.